What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo, and it's time to start planning for week 8 of the Pokemon Premier League. I uh, had a little bit of an unfortunate loss last week against the Nidoqueen Park Rangers, but you gotta move on from those. You have to take what you can from those battles and keep on going. And so in week 8, the Eterna City Enders are going to be going up against the Celta Dino. Um, now, I've watched quite a few of the Celta Dino. Of course, they are um, coached by uh, Bennett, Onesie Bennett, and they have a fantastic record so far, only losing two battles through the entirety of the league. So, a victory here not only could seriously boost uh, our team's standing, but also it would kind of cement us being in the playoffs somewhat as well if I can get a pretty solid victory here. The only main issue with that is that it's going to be incredibly difficult to get that victory. Uh, my opponent has access to Mega Ampharos, Nidoking, Skarmory, Seismitoad, Magmortar, Yuxi, Bastiodon, Starraptor, Floatzel, Vileplume, and Hariyama. Uh, one of the few people in the league to actually have all 11 slots of the team drafted, so very shrewd usage of funds there. Um, the issue with having 11 Pokemon to plan for that means that there's five Pokemon here that he's not going to bring. So our number one um, hurdle to overcome at first is just going to be figuring out which Pokemon is he least likely to bring. Now, as far as the matchup against the Eterna City Enders goes, uh, I really like Mega Lopunny as just kind of a come in, hit something, and leave type Pokemon in this matchup. Uh, Power Up Punch is once again going to be pretty good against this team. Uh, power Punch allows me to get the plus one and then hit things like Yuxi and Bastiodon, which otherwise will be able to take a hit. I do have to watch out for priority from the likes of Floatzel, as the only thing I can hit it with is, of course, Fake Out, and Floatzel can, of course, be banded and hit me with something a little bit more powerful. Um, now, as far as any type of EVs go, I do need to be cognizant of Scarf Nita King. He's brought Scarf Nita King to probably the majority of his matches, actually. And then, of course, Star Raptor. I've seen him running it banded. And, of course, it's a very good Scarfer, too. Uh, something that's a little bit more unconventional that he might run that I've seen him run before is this, uh, the Sunny Day on something like Yuxi, and then have Vileplume with Chlorophyll. So, with all those things in mind, I can't just throw. Lopunny out blindly, I have to be able to handle different things that he might have speedy. Um, I actually would be very, very happy to see something like Vileplume on the team screen because uh, that's a little bit easier for my team to handle overall. Now, that being said, he does have the advantage of versatility here. I have fewer Pokemon to choose from than he does. Granted, it's only two fewer, but it is still fewer. Um, it was actually this matchup that I was a little bit sad to see Lee Vanny go because Lee Vanny would have been pretty nice in this matchup with grass type coverage and slowing down his grounded Pokemon. I'm also a bit annoyed by his team's ability to hazard stack between Nidoking, Seismitoad, Skarmori, Yuxi. Um, they can all use hazards of some variant and then he has different ways to get rid of hazards whether it's um, Skarmori defogging them away or um, some of his faster Pokemon with access was to taunt and just keeping them away. He can also use Magic Bounce with Yuxi as well. So, again, running into the versatility issue. Uh, besides Law Punny, I do like Tyranitar and Stoutland in this matchup. A banded Stoutland has the ability to outrun the majority of his team, and Hariyama nicely does not have access to Mach Punch in the same way that a Conkledur might. And so I, that forces him into using Float Soul, or uh, if he's going to put Sucker Punch on Nidoking, or he could um, have something a little bit weirder, like an Agility Mega Ampharos with max speed, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, but he, that, that's going to be very nice as far as using Retaliate or Return. I do need to run Wild Charge here, and I really need to decide if I want to run Bandit Stoutland because Life Orb is going to be nice because it'll allow me to switch up my moves. But the, the Power of Choice Band here really allows me to, to grab some extra KOs. Uh, so I'll have to figure that out. But Tyranitar, with Fire Blast and Ice Beam, 
um, with more of a defensive build, it can basically take on everything that he has here uh, to some extent. Um, it's going to be a fantastic switch into Skarmori, whom I'm very sure he will be bringing. And it also makes a pretty decent switch into something like Mega Amphros as well, if I'm strapped for uh, things to switch in. Uh, unfortunately, he has quite a few answers to Florges, um, Nidoking, Skarmori, uh, even Seismato gets poison coverage. Um, Bastiodon doesn't really fear anything from Florges. Star Raptor 2, it KOs it with just about everything. Vileplume, and even Hariyama gets bullet punch, so I really have to decide if Florges is the right Pokemon to bring to this matchup. Um, the Florges Kafu Grigus 4 has worked relatively well, but I don't know if it's appropriate here. On the other side, Kafu Grigus is actually pretty nice in this matchup. He doesn't have a really solid way to hit it super effectively, besides, um, maybe a coverage move somewhere and that does open up some options unfortunately toxic spikes are not going to work very well um hariyama gets guts and so it would love to be poisoned vileplume and nidoking can both absorb them and then he has yuxi skarmori bastiodon star raptor they're not even affected by them so it would really just be for uh, the Mega Ampharos, which is not worth bringing. He does have a few things that can set up on something like Kafagriga, so I might put Haze on there. That could be fun, uh, just to kind of wipe away those stat boosts. Um, as far as another defensive pivot that I might bring, Garchomp might be decent for a defensive pivot, uh, or just a, another kind of bulky one that I brought last week. I really liked how last week's Garchomp performed. Uh, but since my opponent doesn't have any fairy types of his own, last week we didn't have the Dragon type coverage move, this time we will be spamming it. Uh, his only switch ins to Garchomp are Skarmori and Bastiodon, to a lesser extent Hariyama who can take probably any one hit from Garchomp. Uh, and I really like that both Skarmori and Bastiodon are threatened by Garchomp's other moves. So if I scarf it and, they, and he brings in Skarmori or Bastiodon, I can switch out into something else. Or I can just turn around and hit, hit them with another coverage move. So maybe a mixed Garchomp running Fire Blast. That could be fun. Uh, so that's nice for an option as well. Um, Mega Ampharos, I definitely think he's going to be running um, a little bit more of a bulky one. He dropped Mega Altaria earlier in the season for Mega Ampharos, which I am much more happy to face Mega Ampharos than I am Mega Altaria with the team that I have. Uh, that being said, if he gets up in agility or something strange like that, it's going to be difficult to slow him down. But Mega Ampharos struggles to break through um, Kafagrigus in a single hit, and it also gets outsped by several of my Pokemon. And Tyranitar can be EV to 2 hit KO it if he tries to run something a little bit more uh, offensive. So I think he's going to bring something more defensive if he brings Mega Ampharos, but that's kind of hard to predict because Mega Ampharos is relatively versatile. Furthermore, some Pokemon that I haven't talked about, particularly on his team, Yuxi and Magmortar, two of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Uh, Magmortar is easily my favorite fire type, and Yuxi is my favorite psychic type. Uh, they, Magmortar can run Choice Scarf or Choice Specs, and it can also go Mixed. Um, mixed Magmortar could be annoying. It actually does get access to Mock Punch, so I don't want to sleep on that. I He brings things unconventionally, and I don't want to sleep on his weird priority options in that way. Uh, so if I did get Stoutland out, I would want to make sure that I switch out and be aware that he might mock punch me in the face. And that poses an issue because Kalfagrigus does not want to take a boosted Fire Blast, boosted by Life Orb or anything like that either. Um, we've seen that he likes to bring Memento Yuxi, uh, and he does like Future Sight as well. Fortunately, no one on my team really minds taking one Future Sight, especially because he's unlikely to invest in it. But Future Sight is still a powerful base 120 attack backed by Stab. Uh, so I do want to be cognizant of things that I can switch around there. He might even bring something weird like Hidden Power Fighting on Yuxi, and that means Tyranitar is not a good switch in to that. Um, I don't see him bringing Yuxi just because it won't necessarily be a good matchup against Tyranitar, Reuniclus, and Kofagrigus, plus Yixi struggles to even hit floor just to an extent, so I don't think he'll bring that one. Uh, in fact, most likely, just going down the list here, I think it's likely that we'll see Mega Ampharos, a Scarf, or um, maybe a Life Orb Nidoking with some mixed coverage options. We'll most likely see Skarmori just as have an, an ability to hazard stack and defog if he needs to. 
So those are three that I definitely think we'll see. On the other end, I do think we will see Star Raptor. It gets fantastic neutral coverage against my team and the things that resist its hits, it can close combat those. Uh, so I think we'll see Star Raptor. Um, so that's gonna be four. And then in the last two, it's kind of a toss up there. I can see him going Yuxi Vileplume again, just to try to control the weather and stop my Stotland from rushing just by putting up Sunny Day. Uh, he also might put up a Rain Dance and give Floatzel a, a boost with Swift Swim. That could be a pain in the butt to handle too. The water coverage from Floatzel could be very annoying and Floatzel can even hit things like Garchomp with Ice Fang. So he has quite a few options. Um, he might bring Hariyama, I just because he's probably expecting me to bring Tyranitar. Uh, I I don't see myself being too worried about Hariyama because Kafagrigus is a very easy switch into it. Granted, he can use knockoff, but I, I really don't mind having Kafagrigus sit in there and pain split with all of Hariyama's yummy HP levels. So we have a few different ways that we can work around this team, but the bottom line is, is that the victory will not be an easy one. Uh, so our, our different win conditions here are going to have to be maybe something like Stoutland or a plus one Law Punny. Um, if I can get some better damage rolls than we got last week, then plus one High Jump Kick does very nicely against his team. Uh, although I don't necessarily want to bring High Jump Kick because he does like running Protect on things like Seismato with Infestation and Bastiodon. So I will have to consider if I really want to run High Jump Kick. Granted, it's going to be really nice to have High Jump Kick against Garmori. But I have to decide if that's something that I really want to risk, um, especially given it two weeks ago when I just missed it completely and Lopunny didn't do anything. So we have our work definitely cut out for us. I think it's going to be a good match either way. He's a very strong battler and I'm excited for this battle. Uh, so definitely look forward to the match. I'm actually going out of town, so I'll have to do this battle while I'm out of town on a little miniature vacation here. Uh, but either way, I'm going to make sure I get the battle in and do the best that I can. Look forward to the battle, guys. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.